Capture One just came out with some pretty incredible new tools and you guys had some <laughs> very interesting things to say about it. I want to put them through their paces because I feel like they were maybe a little bit over glorified in my last video. I also want to touch on the ethics of a tool like Matchlook and kind of just go through some of the shortcomings of this tool so that we can just kind of talk about this a little bit more openly, a little bit more freely. Now, if you haven't seen the last video, there's, there's not gonna be any overlap from these two, so by all means, just go ahead and click over here to see on the intro of when the beta features were just released. But now that I've had a few more weeks to play around with the tool, realistically, I don't know how useful it's gonna be in my workflow or my line of work. The only time I could really think of myself using it would be if a creative director comes up to me and is like, hey, this is the shot that we want it to look like. Can you make it look like this? And I, I've learned grading the normal way for the last 10 years, like I'm sure most of you have. So I don't think of using this tool as a first method of editing or of grading. But if there is a specific look or color or maybe even just contrast ratio that I'm looking to achieve and this tool can help me make it look just like the way my client wants them to look, then maybe it is going to be a little bit more useful. I've got this image of my buddy Alex here pulled up from our trip to Calgary and I thought it was similarly lit-ish to the pain and gain still here that uh, from the movie I was re-watching last night. There is so much that comes to creating an image and it starts at the time of creation. And if you are just given a final color grade and you're like, hey, make it look like this, it's gonna work and this program is pretty awesome at making it close to that, but it's not gonna work every single time. So in this example, I think it's a very close example. They're both outdoor daylit shots. So I think if we just drag this in as our reference image and then I pop open my shot of Alex, we're just gonna keep all of this as adjustments, go to go apply, and what do we get? <laughs> That's pretty Michael Bay to me. Some crazy color in the shadows, some nice depth in the um, in the sky that we've been able to recover. If I had shot this less overexposed, we would have been able to grab even more detail out of the sky. But in just one click of a button, I'm able to get a very contrasty filmic look just like that. And sure, that's probably because they were both lit and shot in a very similar way. And I mean that obviously very loosely. If we come here, what we can do as well, we can always just further this, you know, make it look a little bit more the way that we want it to, we can still fine tune each of these images, which is one of the greatest things about this match look tool, in my opinion, is the ability to then fine tune and change what it is that it changed. You don't need to be just content with what it gives you. So if I want, let's say more color in the sky, even though it is, it was quite a bit blown out, if I just bring those, mm, yeah, I just don't have that much detail left, but it's still pretty neat how it was able to just take those very golden orangey highlights here um, and like a little bit of those bluish undertones and then match that here where the whites have turned a little bit bluish and then his highlights are super orange and goldy um, compared to what it was. It's pretty crazy what it can do in just one click. Now this brings up an interesting question of ethics when it comes to a software like this because yeah, it's learning from you and me learning what color grading was for the last 10 years or 20 years or, or 40 years if you go back. And is that fair? Well, we can still use this tool. And if it's learning from something that I learned five years ago, then it's not doing anything that I can do. It's doing things that I did do and I already reaped the benefits from. It's not necessarily taking away jobs. It's gonna maybe cheapen a little bit of the colorist's value, maybe, but it's also gonna demystify and de-gatekeep a lot of what it is that's actually happening. I think by understanding that a lot of the image happens at creation and not just in the color grade is gonna help you realize that this is just a tool, this is just a, a hammer in your toolkit that you can use when you need it, but it's not something that's gonna necessarily revolutionize the world. Sure, it might be destroying the editing industry in that you're gonna maybe buy a lot less presets now and maybe some people who are making money off of things that are honestly not something you should be making money on, then yeah, maybe it's gonna be destroying a little bit of that industry and I'm totally okay with that. It's something that uh, doesn't necessarily affect my bottom line and I don't think it should be costing you anything to know what colors look good with what. By showing you what it does, you can kind of go through each of these tools and be like, oh, that's what this circle does. That's what this does. That's what that does. And if I play with that, then, oh, okay, now it's how I can get a little bit more of that shot. Also, this is just one of the many ways to grade a certain image. You, there's always a hundred ways to reach your 
final destination when it comes to editing. So let's move on to an image where I don't think it's necessarily gonna work really well. So let's say this is a shot I took uh, a few weeks ago and my client comes after the fact and is like, oh no, we actually wanted it with like soft natural light just like this and we didn't want it to have any of those hard shadows. What do you do? Can you use Match Look to help you in this kind of a situation? So let's throw it in, let's reset this tool. Let's throw this in our reference image and this as our shot that we wanna ed edit. If we click apply, we're gonna see that it doesn't work. And it's not giving any of that same, like it doesn't even look the same at all. It's, it's actually like, it's pretty, it's pretty bad. But we can fine tune it a little bit and we can use this as a starting point instead of just a, oh, it doesn't work, then I can't use it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just reset the image. And instead of affecting, it looked like it wasn't getting the color balance really just quite right. So we're gonna remove the normalize, which is exposure and white balance. And we're also gonna remove the color tone and the color adjust, which is like the HSL sliders and those kinds of things. So we're just gonna affect the light and contrast for this kind of an image. So see if we can match the uh, bright lightness of a natural lit shot versus my kind of contrasty side lit shot here. And let's go apply. Now, all we see is that, okay, it lightened up a little bit of the shadows. It might have changed, it might have made the contrast on the food more similar to each other. Sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it that. But the shot doesn't look the same. The shot isn't like, oh, this is clearly uh, shot by the same person in the same way. No, because the image was shot differently from conception. So it's only, there's only so much that we can do with editing and it's not gonna save your worst shot or it's not gonna like transform every single shot just by a click of a button. If we push it a little bit further, this is another shot I took recently and we're gonna use this as our reference image to grade against this one. So let's go back to reset the tool and let's drag in this burger shot. And same thing, I'm gonna make it just affect the light and contrast so that we can try to get the punchiness that this image actually gets. So we're gonna click apply and boom, now we can get a little bit more of the super highlight, super dark shadows, super vibrant food. And it looks much more similar in that because they were both lit with one very direct light source. And we can try to match a little bit of the intensity of that shot without necessarily trying to just copy paste the exact co same color grade. You know what, let's just for the fun of it, let's just add the normalize, the color and the, the tone, see how, how it grades it. There we go. So it does it pretty poorly once again. It has a hard time making the two images similar because it doesn't really know what it's taking a picture of. It doesn't realize that this is skin, this is food, this is a table. It just sees an aggregate of all the colors and is like, oh, that's pretty much what it should be. But when you come back here and you have different elements in the image, even though it's both food, it still has a very hard time understanding what it's supposed to be doing. It can match the contrast pretty well for images that aren't shot the same or images that are shot the same, obviously. But getting the colors right, you really wanna have two images that are very closely related to each other. So on that note, let's just see if it can also get my pizza shot. So this is a shot that I took very recently and this is how I ended up grading it. So we're gonna just use my final grade and we're gonna put it on the raw file and we're gonna see if it gets it accurate. And I'm kind of curious about this because it was edited in this software and I, I don't know, maybe maybe there's like some cheat codes here. And it, sh it should be pretty close, but I don't know if it's gonna get it just right. So let's just keep it all checked out. We'll hit apply. Ooh, I mean, damn, okay. I mean, damn, that's actually pretty good. The closer the two shots are together, the better it's gonna be at matching the look. And that's probably expected, but this is pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't mind this. Um, Let's see how it did it. Huh, okay, so this is different than how I did it. Uh, my color balance wheels are a little bit different than this, but not by a whole lot. And it looks like the final result is very similar. So this just kind of furthers my point that there are multiple routes that lead to Rome. Um, <laughs> there's, you, you can always find a different way to make the same end result. And it's just a, 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 a mix. It's just a mix of blending a few of those sliders together to get that end result. But if you don't train your eye, if you don't understand what it is that you're looking at, you're gonna have a hard time even knowing what it is that it's doing. So it's not even helping you. It's just, you're like, oh, does this work? Does this work? Does this work? Oh, I like it. Sure, it's fine enough. But that's not, like, that's just, that, that's, that's not changing the industry. You know, that's just helping you get to a 
end result a little bit quicker. And if you want to learn from it, and if you want to put the work in and actually learn what it is that it's doing, then yeah, then you can actually put that effort in and, and go through each of these sliders and see what it is that it did and then tweak it for yourself and see if you can learn from it a little bit. And then over time, you'll get images that are so unique to themselves and, and you can't necessarily use a reference image to grade from. So you just use the things that you've learned from tweaking all those sliders from the other images that you've done before and now you can apply it to your own images for some custom work for yourself and your own custom grading. Color grading is difficult because there's so much that you can do that when you're first starting out, it's like, I don't even know where to start. But a tool like this kind of helps bring that all together and just helps you kind of just demystify a little bit of what's actually going on in this, in, in this world. There's enough things in our mind to take a picture, especially if you're dealing with clients. There's a lot of things on your mind already. This just takes a few things off of it for you. I hope you like this video, guys. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave a like on your way out. And I'll see you guys on Thursday. Later.